Cozy fantasy is a genre that has blown up recently, but because it's so newly popular, I keep seeing the same four books recommended over and over. I've read 30 different cozy fantasy books and series that I love, and I'm gonna tell you about all of them. First, we're gonna do a little bit of background on the genre, but please feel free to use the timestamps to skip right to the recommendations. So what is cozy fantasy? This term is gonna mean something different to everybody. Usually it means low stakes and little to no content warnings. It's the first chapter of The Hobbit. We're hanging out in the Shire, nobody's going on any quests. Personally, my favorite cozy fantasy is a little bit darker than that. It's what the amazing TikToker Feed the Writer calls Nazgul cozy fantasy. She says, we're still in the Shire, but we're also a depressed ghoul who needs some trauma and dark magic to make us feel at home. I will link her in the description. She also has, I think, a YA cozy fantasy that is coming out or is out. I will link that as well. So I would love to know in the comments what your personal definition of cozy fantasy is. Okay, now let's talk about where to find cozy fantasy recs. I'm not gatekeeping these from you. Middle grade or YA probably has the widest variety of traditionally published cozy fantasy because books written for a younger audience tend to have less violence and gore. Hopefully as publishers catch on that we all want more books in this genre, they'll start publishing some adult books as well. Fantasy romance is also a really great place to look since romances can be really sweet and heartwarming. Graphic novels, personally I've had great success with cozy sci-fi and cozy fantasy graphic novels recently. And indie publishing is a fantastic place to look. I love finding authors on TikTok or searching on Amazon because like I said earlier, traditional publishing has kind of just figured out that we all want to buy books in this genre. People have been writing in this genre. Traditional publishing just wasn't ready to publish it until now. So personally, I would love to know, especially if you have recs from indie authors, if you could put those in the comments, I would be so appreciative. And I mean, I'm not gonna stop reading this genre anytime soon, so if you wanna subscribe, I'm sure I'll be talking about a lot of cozy fantasy recs in the future. But seriously, once you find an author that you like, dig through their backlist. Chances are they've written more than one cozy book. Long-term subscribers know that I read at least one T. Kim Fisher book a month. Our definitions of cozy fantasy are going to be different, and that's okay. I'll do my best in the recommendations to give you a heads up when things are a little bit darker or more high stakes. But as always, please check content warnings and take care of yourself. On to the books. So you've probably already read Legends and Lattes. It's the quintessential cozy fantasy book. Our hero puts down her sword and opens up a coffee shop in a fantasy world where most people have never heard of coffee. Lots of found family, a little bit of romance, and an adorable mouse baker. If you liked this, I recommend the Tea Dragon Society series. This is an adorable middle grade graphic novel series. There are three of them out so far. I have the first two. In here we have tea dragons who grow leaves or flowers and you can brew those leaves or flowers to make magical tea. The art is beautiful and the messages are as heartwarming as the tea. Or for something with a little bit more plot and action but will still make you weep at how nice everyone is to each other, try Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. We're following two badass women who are in love as they flee their old lives to open up a bookshop that sells tea. This sapphic relationship is everything. Just the way they communicate and talk through disagreements and tough decisions was so heartwarming and healthy. This made my heart so happy and the second book just came out. I have ordered it. It's in the mail on its way to me. It's called A Pirate's Life for Tea. There's a baby griffin named Ponder that I am very excited about. <laughs> This series has more plot than some people like in their cozy fantasy, but it's just what I wanted because the found family is so strong and this relationship is such a great example about working through tough situations together. For more tea-related cozies, you could try my favorite cozy sci-fi ever, which is The Monk and the Robot Duology by Becky Chambers. The first one is a psalm for the wild belt, and the second one is a prayer for the crown shy. But this is really one reading experience. We're following a tea monk as they try to figure out what their purpose in life is, and also a robot as it attempts to answer the question, what do humans need? I sobbed multiple times reading this. It envisions a post-capitalistic world where our society centers care and I just want to live within the pages of this book. For other things in this same vein of what's my purpose slash cozy career moments, try Garlic and the Vampire and Garlic and the Witch, which is an adorable graphic novel series about an anxious bulb of garlic or join Rosemary on an interspecies crew aboard a spaceship. This has action and plot, things get life-threatening, but it also has next level found family. The way that Becky Chambers writes found family is my absolute favorite thing. I loved watching our characters navigate relationships and understanding different cultures. Everybody made mistakes sometimes, but they were all genuinely just trying to do what was best for everyone else. I'm really excited to continue in this series with A Closed and Common Orbit. 
Next up, you could try the graphic novel Nimona. Our main character basically adopts a villain because she wants to be his sidekick. It's funny, it's heartwarming, and it plays on the hero-villain trope in a way that I really loved. Or watch our main character make dough come to life in A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking. T. Kingfisher's middle grade is prime cozy fantasy. It's funny, but still dark, so things do get a little life-threatening. There's a bone horse in here that is so cool, and most of the fighting violence happens with bread, so there's not a lot of gore. Which means it feels a lot more low stakes than some of T. Kingfisher's other stuff. Small Miracles is about the fallen angel of petty temptations, and if you like chocolate, you need to read this book. I ended up liking this a lot more than the similar story of Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. There was too much casual racism and sexism in that one for me to have a good time, but Small Miracles gave me pretty much everything I wanted out of that book anyways. The Book of Zog is a Lovecraftian cozy fantasy. Our main character is an eldritch horror. I'm only about 50% of the way through this one, so I can't give you final thoughts yet, but make sure you stay tuned for my February wrap-up to hear what I thought of the last half of this. I will be honest, the first chapter of this felt like it was written with heavy use of a thesaurus, but it is turning into a really sweet story. I'm just not sure if it's all gonna come together at the end, so maybe hold off on this until I give final thoughts in my February wrap-up. Okay, the Murderbot Diaries are 100% going to be too violent for most people to class as cozy fantasy, but I do really think that this series deserves a place on this list. The first book is called All Systems Red, but this is the only one that I own. I think it's the fifth book in the series. It's the only full-length novel, so the rest of them are novellas. I think it deserves a place on this list because of the incredible found family and conversations about finding purpose. Book one did feel a little bit rushed to me, but I still think about book two and the conversations that we had in there. I just had a fantastic time. I binged this series this year and I loved all of them. We're following a security unit that is a half robot, half human construct, and this sec unit calls itself Murderbot. It's sarcastic and funny and it's been treated pretty poorly in the past, but it finds some humans that help it start a new life. Such a wonderful series, and I'm really excited to see what Martha Wells does next. She has a fantasy book coming out this year. Okay, now let's talk about books that you should pick up if you love The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is a witch who's living an isolated life who goes to tutor three young witches who are orphans. It's adorable and a very similar story to The House in the Cerulean Sea, so you've probably already read that. But have you tried this adorable witchy graphic novel with a werewolf love interest? It's got really amazing deaf representation and a beautiful art style too. And if you're looking for more cozy fantasy romance, boy do I have recommendations for you. Half a Soul is Regency Fairy Romance. I just fell in love with this book. It does have fairies, so the beginning and the end do get dark, but the middle is pure cozy. I'm really excited to pick up the second book in the series, which is about a fairy godfather who has no idea what he's doing. Or may I present to you my favorite author of all time, T. Kingfisher. Her books are pretty dark, but they're so funny and they feel really cozy to me. Probably the most cozy is Swordheart. And the Saint of Steel series does get violent and gory. There's a lot of talk of decapitation and dead things. And the third book has kind of a death trap saw situation going on. But all of these romance books are set in the same world and that world is cozy. There are still things like sexism and discrimination in this world, but the main characters that we're following are all genuinely good people who are just trying to do what's best for each other. There are some minor quests, but we're not trying to save the world. We're just trying to help a small group of people and find some happiness along the way. I also love that these books are following people in their 30s. I feel like it's so hard to find books written about people in this age range, especially in cozy fantasy, since a lot of the things that I've found so far lean younger or are straight up YA or middle grade. There's also the Clockwork Boys series that's set in this same world. So if you really love these and you want to continue on in that world, I would recommend the Clockwork Boys. It's a suicide mission found family, but it does get pretty dark. So in the cozy fantasy recommendations, I'm going to stick with Sword Heart and the Saint of Steel series as my recommendation. Recommendations. Seriously, if you read one thing on this list, please let it be a tea game for sure. I think there's at least five on this list. She's my favorite author. An oldie but a goodie, if you haven't read The Night Circus yet, I do recommend it. Everyone has such genuine love for the circus and it feels very whimsical and magical to uncover all of the different tents alongside our main characters. 
Okay, I don't think I would classify this next chunk as romance, but they do have a lot to say about love. Howl's Moving Castle, if you love the movie, I do highly recommend the book. It was really fun to see a lot of the characters' backstories that the movie didn't have time to go into, and a lot of the story did end up getting changed. I think Howl's much more annoying in the book than he was in the film, and I really love seeing what elements were changed in the book-to-movie adaptation. I think the movie is still my favorite of the two, but I do still highly recommend the book. On a Sunbeam is a beautiful graphic novel. We're following our main character at two different times in her life. First, while she is at boarding school getting to know her girlfriend, we're following their relationship, and then later as she has her first job aboard a spaceship. She's also in that later timeline trying to find her way back to her girlfriend who is currently in a very remote part of space. I would say this has very similar vibes to The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, but even cozier if possible. And like I said, the art is just stunning. I also love Neil Gaiman. His books are dark, but they do have a lot of warmth and wit in them. Try Stardust to follow a boy who is trying to find a fallen star to bring back to the girl that he wants to marry. Ocean at the End of the Lane is very dark, and please approach with caution, check content warnings for this one for sure, but I still did find it cozy in a Nazgul kind of way. Or try my personal favorite, which is The Graveyard Book. The main character's entire family is murdered in the first scene, but trust me, it really is cozy. The ghosts in the graveyard up the hill end up adopting this baby boy, and it made my heart grow two sizes too big Grinch style. I also just found out that this is a chapter by chapter retelling of the Jungle Book, which went right over my head, but does explain why such a dark story feels really cozy. I also have to include Sir Terry Pratchett and the Discworld series. I've currently only read one of the book, Guards Guards. There are 40 plus books in the series and everyone kind of has a different theory on where you should start, but I went with Guards Guards and I had a great time. It's got similar wit to Neil Gaiman and lots of tomfoolery and shenanigans afoot. Guards Guards has dragons as well. I laughed out loud on an airplane reading this. Okay, some more miscellaneous Nazgul darker cozy fantasy. Watch Over Me I debated including on this list because it really only has one speculative element, but I just love this book so much that I have to shout it from the rooftops. The speculative element in here are ghosties that are manifestations of childhood trauma. We're following a young woman who has aged out of the foster care system. She goes to work on this farm as a teacher to young children. The ghosts in the story are not scary ghosties, but the things that have happened to these kids are, so again, please check content warnings before reading. This is the first book I had read where I was following characters who were actively working through their trauma, and it was a really healing experience for me. It just felt so real and yet so magical at the same time. Okay, let's talk about Nettle and Bone because I didn't think that this was cozy fantasy when I read it and then I kept seeing it pop up on cozy fantasy lists. If you love this book, I highly recommend you check out more of T. Kingfisher's work like Sword Heart and the Saint of Steel series I mentioned earlier. I find that those books are much cozier than this one, so this isn't the one that I was expecting to see on all of these cozy fantasy lists. In this book, we are following a young woman as she completes three impossible tasks and enlists the help of a grave witch to help her sister get out of an abusive marriage. It's funny, it's dark, we have a bone dog, we got a possessed chicken, it's a good time. Next up is the Wayward Children series. I've read the first five books in this series so far, but I can't hold five books at the same time, so I'm just gonna hold this one up. We're following children who have found portals to other worlds that are perfect for them. They are heroes in these worlds, and they finally feel like they belong, and then suddenly they find themselves back in our world, and it's a really traumatic experience for them. So they go to Eleanor West's home for wayward children, where they try to work through some of this trauma and also find the doors back to their perfect worlds. Each book takes place mostly in either one of the worlds that the children has visited or in Eleanor West's home. My favorite so far is book two, which has some really profound things to say about gender norms. Again, that series is darker, but for me, it really fits in cozy fantasy because we're watching people actively work through their trauma with other people, there's found family, it feels really cozy to me, but there's also dark things going on. The first book has multiple murders, so just heads up. <laughs> Sheets is a really sweet graphic novel about a girl who is running a laundromat after her mother passes away. We're also following a ghostie who wears a sheet. Both of these characters are trying to come to terms with death and their new normal. They end up running into each other like chaos ensues and a beautiful friendship develops. Okay, a sub sub genre here is like mystery cozy fantasy. I've only just dipped my toe into this, so I would love recommendations for more in the comments. My favorite so far is Ilatsoe. Our main character can talk to the ghosts of dead animals and we're trying to solve the murder question mark of her cousin. We're dealing with vampires, we're having conversations about stolen Native American land, it's incredible. 
again, this one gets dark, but it does feel cozy. The group that we're following is this amazing friend slash family group. And we also have our ghosty animal companions, primarily a dog named Kirby. The second book I've read in this sub subgenre is Nudes Emerald. It's not my favorite thing I've read, but if you typically read YA, I think this one might be a win for you, especially if you love the Half a Soul series because it's kind of following a similar vibe. We are hunting for Nudes Emerald, which is this magical stone. It was stolen. We're in Regency England. Our main character is kind of living a double life because she is dressing up as a man so she can hunt for this stolen emerald and she's also going through her first season coming out in London. There's romance but it is very very chaste so that's why it's in this category and not the romance section. Like I said it sort of feels like a YA half hustle. And the rest of these I had no idea where to put so I apologize. The Girl Who Drank the Moon is about this town where every year a baby is sacrificed to appease a witch and every year a witch finds a baby in the forest and does her best to take care of the baby and find it alive loving home. There's some overarching scheming going on here that neither of these groups know about, but we find out about it pretty early on. Mostly, we're following Luna, the girl who drank the moon and became a magic. There's a baby dragon, the witch becomes her adoptive grandmother. It's such a beautiful story and it really took me surprised with how much I enjoyed it. Lonely Castle in the Mirror is more magical realism than it is cozy fantasy, but it gives me the same feeling that I get when I read cozy fantasy, so I wanted to include it on this list. We're following a group of students whose mirrors all start glowing. Once they go through the mirrors, they find the Lonely Castle in the Mirror and the Wolf Queen. They need to find a room and a key in order to be granted a wish, but mostly we're kind of just following this group of students and trying to figure out why they specifically have been chosen to come to this lonely castle in the mirror and why they'd rather be there than at school. Similar vibes to Wayward Children, but less outward fantasy and also less dark. Ultimately, this is a found family friendship story. Okay, these last two are recommendations for things that I would class as regular fantasy, but they do have lower stakes or some cozy elements. For example, Age of Myth. It feels cozy because it pokes fun at itself and primarily we're set in this pastoral village. There are things going on that have stakes and ramifications for the entire world, but mostly we in the story are following this one village. Bonus for wolf animal companion. Or Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I keep seeing this on cozy fantasy lists and again, I just, I don't think it's that cozy. The fae in this book are dark, like kidnapping children because they're bored dark. All of the fairy fae characters in here are really apathetic towards violence, and to me that is deeply terrifying in a way that does not feel cozy. But we also do get some found family in here, and we are set in a remote island that's up north. It's very cold, we're very secluded, we're talking about academia. Our main character, Emily Wilde, is trying to create an encyclopedia of fairies. There's a love interest and their banter is pretty funny, but I've seen this on so many cozy fantasy lists and it just doesn't feel that cozy to me, so that's why I'm including it in this section. I really enjoyed it as a fantasy set in a smaller setting, but I was on edge pretty much the entire time because of the way that the fairy deals and trickery worked. I will say the ending had some lovely found family. I would pitch this actually as pretty similar to Howl's Moving Castle. We have a character in here, a love interest, who's pretty similar to Howl, but you're more anxious while reading. Okay, that was a lot of cozy fantasy books, so hopefully you found something that you haven't already read. Please let me know in the comments what cozy fantasy you're excited to read. My personal cozy fantasy TBR is over 30 books long, so I'm not going to tell you about all of them here, but I will put a list up on the screen of some of the things that I'm excited to read next. Let me know which ones I should pick up first, or if there are any that are missing off my list that you love. I don't think this genre is going anywhere, and I'm really excited to see what authors and publishers pick up next. If you want to stick around and see what I thought of this next pile of coziness, please feel free to subscribe. And if you like this video and you want to let the algorithm know, I would really appreciate a like. And if you want to keep hanging out, I think you'll enjoy these videos. I upload every Sunday at 11am Eastern, so I will see you next time. Bye!